Now let's get into this topic of the benefits or the rights that you have as the spouse, married spouse of a German citizen, okay? Some ladies DM me, I have um, a child with my husband and I don't know, I want to do this, I want to do that. I'm in an abusive marriage, what do I do? Let's break some of these things down so that you'll be aware of what you can do, what is your right? When are you in danger? When are you not? And if you're also interested in us sharing information on abuse and abuse in marriage, where you should go to, I've been thinking about it, but I want you guys to also let me know what you think and if we should do a special video on that. And I'll put that up in the next few days. Good. Now let's get into it. What are the benefits? So if you get married to a German, right? and you are a non-EU national. The marriage is recognized in Germany, obviously, just that it, would, it takes a long time for you to get the marriage procedure done. So the marriage procedure will take time, but once you're married, it's obviously automatically recognized. If you want to speed up the marriage process, you always have the chance to go to Denmark to get married. And that is where I'll tell you that if you need more information on that, if you need somebody to guide you through the process, I'm your girl, I'm your plug. I also offer those services of getting married in Denmark and I'll guide you through it. We'll get the right documents and everything and just plan everything well, yes. So that is also possible. So once you get married in Denmark, for example, you just take it to the local authorities and they will then have it recognized in Germany. If you're already in Germany and you are you already have like the visa. You can also have your visa or you can apply for the, the stay that allows you to stay in Germany and gives you the right to work and all of that. But if you're outside of Germany, you apply for the D visa. What, is, what are the requirements for this? The requirements are, for example, that the spouse that is not German should have at least A1 language proficiency. You both should be above 18, of course. You should have health insurance. And when it comes to health insurance, if your spouse um, or your married partner is is working, for example, most of the health insurance will actually allow them to put their family on. And obviously, your married partner is your family. So that shouldn't be a problem. So they can cover you with the health insurance as well. And you should be able to self-sustain yourself financially. So meaning that whoever is in Germany and working, should have an income that can cover both of you, okay? And also some some of the other requirements would be accommodation. Is there enough space and all of that? But usually when it comes to just one person who is not go, with, without kids, like you're not coming with kids and everything, the accommodation part is not always a, a big problem because obviously most of the time you two can share, you know, the 30 quadrat meter and all of that. So that shouldn't be a problem. Now let's come to the issue of the children. When you have children with a German citizen and you are not German, your child automatically is eligible for dual citizenship. So let's say the mother is Ghanaian and the father is German, your child would have both passports, right? And they can keep it to a certain age, but I think by the time your kids are that age, the, dual, the new dual citizenship law is going to cover them. So that's another topic. Just have that in mind and if you are not married if you are not um married parents then the father if the father is the german fa uh, partner he would have to then acknowledge and legally um accept and acknowledge that he's the father of the child for this dual citizenship issue to go through right so but once you are married automatically the marriage the husband is the father of the child but if you're not married he has to go to the step with the legal acknowledgements that's what a lot of people call father shafts so father shafts are clear good and you can't just become german by marrying a german but you can get easier steps than people who are not married to germans because as the partner to a german once you've been in Germany for three years and you've been married two years after, out of those three years, you're eligible to apply for the German citizenship. 
but then you also have to prove the language proficiency you have to also prove that you can take care of yourself or your spouse is taking care of you and all of that but it doesn't mean that it's just easy one of the most biggest or one of the biggest advantages is that your time is cut you know it's halved literally or even more than halved from the um eight years to the three years also when it comes to the Niederlassungs allowance it's the same thing it's not five years like for every other person but for you it is three years so that is another thing that you should um keep in mind and one of the questions that i get a lot is um do i if for example if i get the Niederlassungs allowance do i lose my right to stay in germany if the marriage should fail not necessarily and when it comes to that and you're going through a divorce or anything do not hesitate to find a lawyer if you are scared of finding one or not scared but if you are finding difficulties in finding one or you are, you are hesitant to find one just contact me as well book a session and let's talk it through and then we see a lawyer that is close to you who is good in family law and they would you know guide you through it and help you through it but it's not everybody who loses their right to stay for example if it's because of abuse, verbal, mental, physical, emotional abuse. You get to stay, okay? That is obviously something totally different. Nobody's going to expect you to stay in an abusive relationship, an abusive home, because you don't want to lose your stay. And usually, you, as I already said, usually you can stay in Germany after you've gained, you give the, after you've gained the permanent residency, which is the need of the loudness. After you begin the needle lessons allowedness, you should be able to um, stay in Germany. I hope this has shed some light on this topic. If you have any other questions, guys, do not hesitate. Just reach out and let's talk about it. Okay. Any other thing? I hope I've not forgotten anything. Just link up and let's talk. And it's bye-bye from me, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.